Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, we are delighted to be here today. At least one of us is in the same time zone. We would like to thank the organizers of this workshop for inviting us to speak. Our paper will tackle the intractable issue of the, of the transition between the early Bronze and the Middle Bronze Age in the South Caucasus, a theme that has long been debated and for which clarity is very much needed. A recent online workshop hosted by ARWA addressed this issue at some length, setting it within a broad geographical context and alongside multiple data sets. So this presentation does not set out to provide a definitive account of the social forces driving the early Bronze and the Middle Bronze transition. Rather, our goal is to assess our current understanding of the chronology of the transition and evaluate the issues that have limited our ability to provide a greater temporal resolution. We will also offer some observation on pathways for improving our understanding of both the tempo of historical change and its spatial dimension. But first, let us provide um, a few remarks on how we conceptualize the process of chronology building in archaeology by reflecting on the kinds of questions that we are seeking to answer with a radiocarbon-based chronology. Are we looking to create a temporal map of archaeological cultures arranging a reference sequence of before and after? Are we trying to pinpoint the exact start and end boundaries of a specific phenomenon? If so, how do we characterize this phenomenon? How do we define it? And does it always correspond to the units of archaeological cultures that we often rely on? Or as in this case, are we aiming to investigate transitional dynamics, which could be characterized as gradual and homogeneous or discrete and uneven in a territory? The kinds of chronological questions we pose dictate our, reach, our research methods and by extension, the chronologies that we are looking to compile. Transitions defined as the process by which changes happen are necessarily complex as they straddle multiple social and cultural formations. As such, transitional phases may or may not contain material elements of each of the periods that they, that they straddle. The problem of continuity and rupture is particularly acute for the early bronze and the middle bronze transition as scholars struggle to understand material continuities in, for example, material production in the context of larger scale ruptures in social life, political order, and economy. But our chronological resolution also depends on the scale of the phenomenon that we are trying to track, suggesting that the archaeological assessments of continuity and rupture are better detected outside of a general model of orderly regional sequence and a different temporal scale, navigating between long-term, medium-term, and short-term. Resolution is obviously fundamental to chronology building, a point that Gavin Lucas makes effectively by using a photography metaphor. Optical resolution describes the ability to distinguish between two points. In chronology building, this could correspond to the resolution of the scientific dating method, its precision, as well as the resolution of the archaeological record, essentially our ability to capture moments in situ and identify them in an archaeological stratigraphy. Digital resolution, in contrast, is the ability to distinguish an image clearly based on the density of pixels. In chronology building, this may describe the density of C14 dates associated with a phenomenon that is spatially and temporally defined. So it depends as much on temporal as on spatial data. So scale matters. In other words, digital resolution really measures our ability, our ability to connect the dots to build a coherent chronological picture within, with a given data set. Both of these senses of resolution impact our, our ability to read the radiocarbon record associated with the early bronze, middle bronze transition in very different ways. So here I reported a graph that represents the number of and the ranges of C14 dates associated with post core access uh, context, early Kurgan, that are currently published. More extensive data sets are available, uh, as we know, for the core access, but this will not be discussed here. We also see a few, uh, a few recent uh, dates that were um, presented yesterday. A rough distinction between Markopi and Bedeni occupations indicates that the Bedeni uh, seems to be uh, far better dated by existing data sets, although it, it is important to recognize that there are significant disagreements as to the distinction between Markopi and Bedeni assemblages, which will also not be discussed here. Secondly, most of these dates were obtained over just the last couple of decades using accelerator mass spectrometry, which is the most precise method available to us for the measurement of radiocarbon dates. While canonical dates that are here indicated in red 
that are regularly cited in the literature as the canonical um, as the canonical corpus were obtained with conventional methods, and they more often present very incoherent uh, data sets, even for single sites. So they're pretty scattered. And thirdly, the samples for which radiocarbon dates were obtained can also be extremely heterogeneous. The majority were measured uh, on wood charcoal or wood, here indicated in red, although only rarely was this work performed in the context of dendrochronological analysis. That is the case of the corpus now available for anaerobic urban free, for example. Only a few analyses utilize human remains, here indicated in, in, um, in blue. In a few fortunate cases, surely seeds in green and other uh, materials uh, such as textiles or desiccated bread, here indicated in orange, were retrieved from really extraordinary context. But nevertheless, whether because of obsolete techniques, especially the use of a conventional C14 dating, or constraints on excavation methodology, or even simply the absence of organic materials that were suitable for dating, the samples that provided these dates for the, uh, for the transition were never collected according to a unified specific research question, which makes it difficult to compare and contrast different sets of information that could be retrieved for chronological purposes. For example, what is the relationship between the construction of burial mounds, something that could be uh, tackled by uh, focusing on the dating of charcoal and uh, wood possibly in a endocrinological scope, and the actual deposition, uh, so the human remains. The human remains. <clears throat> so we should take these questions into account as we proceed toward finer and high resolution chronologies. In terms of our understanding of the overall chronology for the Fermi millennium, the C14 record is sufficiently informative to map the primary archaeological phenomena that shape this particular period. In this slide, I have presented the result of a KDE model, which is essentially a way of summarizing the distribution of the elements in a data set to observe uh, the tendency of the data, but without obsc obscuring it too much with individual uh, noise or calibration. So essentially, it's a very good way to observe the composition of a data set. In general, there does seem to be <clears throat> a sequential relationship between the lake core axis, I'm here referring to uh, Badalian's periodization, and uh, the succeeding Markopi and Bedeni phases. In particular, Markopi distributions fall between 2500 and 2400 BCE, while Bedeni distributions is to be constrained more between 2420 and 2100 BCE, with very little data after a 900, probably an outlier. <clears throat> But in the apparent overlap with the lake core axis in this case should not be taken as solid knowledge simply because uh, we're all looking at, at a data set in general terms. So it is very possible that with finer uh, refinement of single sites in single core axis occupation, this, uh, this image may really change, but that is not the purpose of this particular model. Secondly, Debates about the distinction between Markopi and Medenia sandwiches do call into question the separation of these data sets. So when combined, as I presented in this slide, the overall distribution of the phenomena doesn't really change much. Simply, it is read as the uh, as a composition of the same data set. So we see that, again, the majority of the distribution of the data that compose this data set, which I uh, listed here as a post core axis, fall between 2500 and 2100. So it's essentially combined the two. We very little dated before 2500 and very little dated after, uh, after 1900. <clears throat> the fact that the uh, Markopi area does not stand out in this distribution could either be due to the fact that it does not represent a separate group based solely on radiocarbon, or simply because the data are insufficient to demarcate the distribution compared to Bedeni. So obviously more dates are, are needed in the future. But when it comes to the precise distinction of dates, events, and dated archaeological materials, optical resolution is really what we need. Unfortunately, as it, already, uh, as it was already discussed yesterday, the period under examination uh, is particularly challenging because the calibration curve uh, introduces ambiguities due to the presence of numerous wiggles and in some cases of even shorter plateaus. So essentially, whenever we try to calibrate uh, a radiocarbon date that falls in this period, the calibrated value will intersect the curve in multiple points. So we will offer multiple resolutions. And unless in the we are in the presence of a of further information, it will be really uh, difficult to distinguish uh, different points on the calendar timeline. So for example, when it comes to the area between 2600 and 2500, 
the, cur the, the calibrated dispense intercept the curve in at least two or three points, which makes it difficult to distinguish between a true calendar date of 2600 and a true calendar date of 2500 BCE. I've demonstrated this in the uh, right, uh, in the right uh, graph with a, a series of simulated dates for a true calendar date of 2600 BCE and a true calendar date of 2500 BCE. So what we observed here by simply looking at the, uh, at the simple calibrated values is that many of them could be really confused, even though they, 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 uh, they are known to refer to different calendar dates. And that this can be seen in at least two, uh, two subset of this particular simulation. This distinction is, specific, is especially important for compiling a, a coherent chronocultural sequence, especially if what we're looking to obtain is to identify uh, common boundaries in the overall regional cultural sequence. Recent dates from Aigavan, which represents the very end of the core axis in Armenia, have yielded a span that covers uh, the 26, 2500 BC, so it falls on that problematic, uh, problematic area of the calibration curve. In a simple bounded phase model for Aigavan, and overall span, uh, the overall span is constrained to the lower end of the distribution. So it would appear to date more towards 2500 and 2600 BC. But when we compare this to the earliest known date for Markopi, which was recently provided by Sagona and published uh, in his latest contribution of 2018, it is very difficult to distinguish uh, the exact relationship between these two these two sites. And that is because there is not a lot of uh, there is not a lot of information available for Makopi. This is an isolated date. It's very ambiguous, and uh, we cannot advance definitive statements about the coexistence or the succession of these two chronocultural stages. So obviously. <clears throat> Achieving a greater degree of optical resolution is, should be among the primary goals for chronological studies to come. <clears throat> it is also critical that we set the early bronze and the middle bronze transition into a uh, geographical and spatial context, allowing for diversity in its characterization. Because of the great heterogeneity that tested during the early bronze age, it is possible that the resettlement during the transition and the middle bronze was equally heterogeneous. And then we may be looking at very different, uh, at, at very different images of this sequence uh, all over the territory. For example, the late core axis occupation at Gagarot, excavated by Project Karagats, uh, where the occupation corresponds to Stratum 1b, was recently refined by a work of uh, Manning and colleagues using a Bayesian, uh, a Bayesian approach to a range that falls between 2864 and 2713 BCE. This range shrinks, uh, this shrinks by a lot, and it is uh, 200 years shorter than it would have been uh, if we were looking at the unmodeled data set. The absence of the middle bronze at Gagart was already evident stratigraphically and via radiocarbon dates, but this, results mar this result marks a longer gap with the following post core axis phase, if the beginning of that phase is to be set around 2500 BC, as it currently stands in the literature. So as Bayesian modeling has been adopted in the region, it is very likely that other core access settlements will reveal much shorter lifespans, creating an even longer temporal gap between the final core access settlements and the initial middle bronze sites. Peculiar situations are also present at sites where both core access and middle bronze, uh, and middle bronze presence is attested. For example, at the recently excavated sites of Carnot, the MB, uh, the middle bronze, the middle bronze pre presence appears as an intrusive uh, Tialeti Vanadzor, uh, Vanadzor of horizon of burials, which is directly, uh, which intrudes directly um, onto the site after the core axis occupation. So there, there does not appear to be a transitional, um, a transitional phase mediating between between the two at this particular site. <clears throat> Conversely. At, site, uh, at, a, uh, at other sites like Karmisar, which was recently brought to our attention by Arsene Bobokian and his colleagues, the excavators have suggested a possible continuity between the late calculatic and the middle bronze based on a continuous visitation of the site. So more on the, uh, on this, on the, visita on, on the vegetation on the site than the existence of an actual strat uh, stratified and continuous presence. So um, radiocarbon dating at both sites is currently, un uh, is currently under, uh, is currently in progress. So um, more, more data is obviously needed to, to assess this, uh, this situation. 
As for what concerns the context currently currently available um, uh, currently available for Markopia assemblages, that, that do also appear to that do appear to be both situations where both core access and Markopia are present and in present in situations where Markopi uh, is the is the only present one. So in Georgia, for sites like Sikagora, um, a hypothesis of a coexistence has been advanced, although the evidence, both radiocarbon and stratigraphic, is currently inconclusive. But at other sites uh, in Armenia, uh, Badalian has observed that Markopi, uh, Markopi sites, such as, uh, as, such as I recently highlighted at Aknashen and Merkaber, appear in territories that were not previously occupied by the core axis. It is fair to say that at present, the relationship between the core axis and Markopi communities is not very well understood. But as the late occupation of the core axis culture uh, contract, the chronological distance between the two phenomena appears likely to grow. And finally, the nature of the core presence of the Danny core axis materials at some location also points towards singular patterns. Most recently, the data set published by Vediana Shvili and colleagues from Rabati demonstrated that there is a five, six centuries gap between the core axis horizon which is constrained to the very end uh, of, the fourth mil of the fourth millennium, beginning of the fourth, and the subsequent Bedeni layers. And something similar could be a place in Shirakart. It could be a place in Shirakartli, where the presence of Bedeni material at Natsargora and Aradetis has been possibly related to the presence uh, of Bedeni of a Bedeni settlement in the regional center of Berikel Devi. This Bedeni settlement was recently dated by uh, also also related, related by Sagona with a few dates that were made available in his latest cont cont contribution of 2018. The dating of the overall Kuraks's occupation of Birikar Devin is unknown at present. But when compared to the <laughs> When compared to the surrounding dated core access settlements, a gap of five, six centuries also appears to also appears to be detectable. Clearly, <clears throat> more precise and exhaustive data sets are needed to elucidate on the nature of this pattern, but the presence of gaps in some local sequences would appear to be a significant element for understanding transitional dynamics and resettlement dynamics during the early bronze, middle bronze transformation. So are the post core access communities targeting these older core access settlements landmarks on purpose? To conclude, in a region where geography constitutes a strong constraining factor and geographical, geographical location could bear deeper value for the legitimization of new settlements. So despite chronological gaps, cultural geography could be a predicting factor for the appearance of early Kurgan settlements or early Kurgan activity in general during the post core access period in areas where the core access were previously present. Current data on the, on the end of the early bronze suggests far more discreteness and diversity in the transition to the subsequent period, as opposed to what has been suggested by material analysis. Persistent places rather than persistent times might be a fruitful lens through which we evaluate transitions in the South Caucasus. And as we improve our optical resolution, the construction of absolute chronologies, for the construction of absolute chronologies, we may find that a stark distinction between the life, we may find a stark distinction between the life of the settlement and the life of materials, whereby gaps might, for, might, might force us to revisit models of historical continuity to disclose patterns of long-term memory while accounting for the specificity of transition at specific places and at specific times. And with that, <clears throat> thank you very much for your attention.